Hasanabi Corporate. I don't even know what that is. Some exclusive new reporting on the hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees that Rudy Giuliani is now staring down and the desperate attempts that he has made to get former President Donald Trump to cover them. With his attorney in tow, I am told that Rudy Giuliani traveled to Mar-a-Lago in late April on a mission to make a personal appeal to Trump to pay his legal bills. By going in person, Giuliani and that lawyer, Robert Costello, believed that they could help explain face-to-face -face why Trump music? needed to assist his attorney with those ballooning legal bills. They argued that, really, it was in Trump's best interest to do so. But apparently, it fell on deaf ears. Trump is notoriously strict about digging into his own coffers. He did not seem very interested, I'm told, in covering everything that Giuliani and Costello wanted. One source says that he verbally agreed to help but he didn't commit to any specific amount or timeline. Another source tells me that Trump really only agreed to pay a small fee from a data vendor that was hosting Giuliani's records. I'm told that was about $340,000, while in total, Giuliani's legal fees are in the seven-figure range. Giuliani's trip to Mar-a-Lago has not been previously reported. We're telling you about it first here on The Source tonight, but it does indicate the level of financial stress that he has been facing for months now. Some people in Trump's inner circle were actually surprised by Trump's unwillingness to pay for Giuliani's bills, given... How are you in Trump's inner circle and you're surprised? Like, I don't even think Rudy Giuliani was surprised that Trump said no. He went anyway because he has no other options. If anything, Donald Trump is incredibly famous, most famous, for refusing to pay the $5 a month subscription at the top of the hour to avoid the three-minute ad break. That's what he's best known for. But yeah, it's it's so hilarious to be in Trump's orbit in his close circle and be like, "What? Donald Trump doesn't Donald Trump doesn't want to pay the the legal fees of people that are his co-defendants who could potentially get him in trouble if they're not adequately protected?" Hmm. And he could find himself under intense pressure to cooperate with federal and now state prosecutors who have charged Trump. Giuliani already sat down voluntarily with Jack Smith's team this summer in two back-to-back -back sessions. He's now a co-defendant in the election interference case in Georgia. He is facing 13 criminal charges, like Trump, and potentially serious prison time. It's not out of character for Trump to not want to pay legal fees. This is something we have heard from many of his attorneys in the past, including his former attorney, Michael Cohen, when I sat down with him last month. Now, history repeats itself. One thing that we know for certain is that Donald does not pay legal fees. Donald doesn't pay fees at all. There's a pattern to what he does. He will pay a little bit, fall behind, pay a little more, fall bigger behind. I'm joined now by former White House counsel under President Nixon, John Dean. John, good to see you again. I mean, what do you make when you hear that Rudy Giuliani is going to Mar-a-Lago making this desperate plea, trying to get Trump to pay for his legal fees. I love this guy constantly being on CNN. One, because he's profoundly old, and two, he's like, his glasses from the Nixon era. He himself is a Nixon guy. What do you think about, what do you think about a competent legal team uh, in comparison to Trump's incompetent legal team, especially as it pertains to like avoiding uh, any kind of legal scrutiny for illegal acts? And Trump not really reciprocating on, on most of that. I think that Trump is aware that during Watergate, for example, uh, the payment of legal fees got lawyers in a lot of trouble, as did joint defense agreements. The, uh, the fact that uh, he's not paying, though, is a pattern of this man. As Michael just said, uh, he just doesn't like to pay his bills. So he will have people come after him to get the fees. Uh, he had an agreement with Michael, and he, Michael had to go to court to get it, his fees paid. So, uh, Caitlin, there's no surprise here. Uh, and Trump, I think, is willing to tough it out. He doesn't think Rudy will flip. But that is a concern. I mean, I think people, you know, the Michael Cohen effect, people have said that Trump has kind of changed his tactics there because of a concern of it turning into a Michael Cohen situation, potentially. I doubt that Rudy will. Rudy, Rudy knows the inner workings of the system better than most of the former U.S. attorney from the Southern District of New York. Uh, he knows particularly the RICO law. Uh, he will try to poke holes. He will think he can prevail. He, he'll... This is John Dean, who uh, Nixon attempted to force to sign a letter of resignation that amounted to a confession that Dean had directed the Watergate cover-up without the knowledge of the president. 
um, Haldeman or Ehrlichman. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Watergate, uh, White House Plumbers is a really fun look into, a really comedic and fun look into uh, the Watergate disaster and how demonstrably incompetent, how unimaginably and hilariously fucking incompetent the Nixon administration was <laughs> at spying on the DNC and the Democrats in general is pretty funny. Definitely recommend it. Uh, it's also RFK Jr.'s uh, most important supporter acts his fucking face off in it. Woody Harrelson is, of course, who I'm referencing here. Good show. Put one of the main characters. Is it New Kennedy fan? Yes. Woody Harrelson famously came out recently uh, uh, with a show of support for RFK Jr. Anyway. Uh, he certainly, at the motion stage, the early stages of this proceeding, is not likely to flip. It's only if the government of Georgia can overwhelm him and he realizes he's going to go down and maybe he can save himself uh, some years by cracking a deal. I, I sat down with Bill Barr, Trump's former attorney general, of course, as you know, the other week. And he had this to say about what he has seen, he says, happen to people who were in Trump's orbit. He leaves in his wake ruined lives like this, the people who went up to Capitol Hill, these individuals, many of the people who served them in government that got sucked into things. And he just leaves all this uh, carnage in his wake. Do you think he cares about that? No, he doesn't care about that. Loyalty is a one-way street for him. John, do you think Rudy Giuliani winds up as more carnage here if he, if he hasn't already in some people's view? I think he will. I think he's in deep trouble. Uh, I, the government's case it looks like it's overwhelming. His federal uh, issues have not been resolved. Uh, Trump could not pardon him in Georgia if indeed he is convicted in Georgia. Uh, I How about pardon himself? Trump could not pardon himself in Georgia either, let alone Rudolph Giuliani, you know? Oh, God. This is why I love the Georgia case, okay? I love it because it's like, it's it's very, it's a very good case. It's a very strong case. There's a lot of real harm and real uh, conspiracies that occurred there. And I don't mean conspiracy theories. I mean, like, conspiring to do crimes. And obviously, it'll be televised in its entirety because it's a state court. So I love that. And last but not least, Donald Trump has no, like, presidential jurisdiction pardon power whatsoever in state affairs as a matter of fact as we found out even the fucking governor does not have singular pardon power in the state of georgia unlike some other states so it's awesome i don't think trump is going to make it uh, back to the white house i think people oh yeah the roger stone planning the fake electors Hello? video came out too which was um an ari melber the beat exclusive which hasn't gotten a lot of momentum i don't know why Maybe it's like not a real bombshell. Maybe they're exaggerating it because usually things like that get a lot more coverage. People are starting to get a glimmer of what uh, that could be and they don't want it. Uh, maybe more Republicans uh, will do that before the primary vote. I don't know. Uh, they're slow learners, apparently. So I, I think Rudy is going to get destroyed by this. It's sad, but uh, true. I mean, yeah, what is he... If he is out of, as out of money as his attorney was arguing in court today that he is, I mean, that whole, the entire reason his attorney was in court today was arguing that he could not pay uh, part of what he is being ordered to pay as part of that Smartmatic lawsuit. I mean, what does he do in that situation? Does he, does he represent himself? I mean, what options does Rudy Giuliani have at that point? Well, he can get a court-appointed lawyer at some stage. Uh, representing yourself is the worst option because... You'll, uh, anyone who represents himself is likely to make bad decisions about that representation. I think Rudy is likely to uh, go into Chapter 11 or bankruptcy of some sort. Uh, I understand his, his apartment is on the market. Uh, it could raise several million dollars, uh, but he probably has a lot of debt he has to handle immediately as well. So I think bankruptcy is a potential and maybe a court-appointed attorney. I mean, that would be kind of remarkable in the worst way. Ain't if someone no, was, you know, once known. Ain't as a no way. Ain't no fucking way broke boy gets a court appointed attorney. That is fucking hilarious, dude. Oh my God. I wish, God, I wish Lowell overruled was in Georgia instead of New York. Imagine Alex having to 
fucking defend Rudolph Giuliani in court. Hassan, make an offer on his apartment for one eighth asking price. What is that? Whose apartment? America's mayor. You know, the role that he had after 9-11 is then potentially, as you predict could happen, being represented by a court appointed attorney. Oh, Rudy saw in his apartment. I can't wait for the Adam McKay movie of this. Oh, it's so true. There will be a banger Adam McKay movie made out of this. I'm filing bankruptcy. Are you even listening to the vid? Okay, I was fucking pissing, okay? I, I to missed To cover his part. legal fees. It has a Shakespearean element about it, although I don't really think of Shakespeare when I look at Rudy and some of the news clips of him recently. Uh, it does have that kind of tragic uh, uh, tale that is being told in front of us. So we'll have to all watch and no one wishes him ill. Uh, but he's gotten himself where he is. What do you make of... Can Rudolph Giuliani get 6.5 milli for his Upper East Side apartment? Yo, look how gross that looks. You know... Bro, I'm not even kidding. I can smell it. You know what I'm talking about? I can smell that apartment. Just by looking at it, I can smell that apartment and it's disgusting. Mothballs and red wine stains. I want to roll up to him and be like, I'll give you fucking $1 million. Not a single dime more. Take it or leave it, bitch. Take it or leave it, broke boy. The hefty price tag made us wonder if the 79-year-old was being realistic. It's on the Upper East Side, close to Central Park. On Madison Avenue, the building dates to 1906 and fronts a gothic-inspired brick and terracotta facade. High floor ceiling, resident bows, plenty of sunshine. Original details include windows, hardwood floors, wood paneling, and leaded glass. The unit is accessed by a semi-private elevator. The formal layout includes a living room, a library, a wood-burning fireplace, a dining room that leads to a glass conservatory. Heating kitchen comes with a butler's pantry, and there's a laundry room and a staff room with an entire ensuite bath. Oh, God, look at these bedrooms. Oh, but the Eames cook chair. My man's got the Eames cook chair, folks. Look at that. Two bedrooms, two baths were combined to create an impressive primary suite. It was a site of an FBI search. ex mayor is on the homes 2002. Only one other apartment is currently for sale in the 33-unit building. That one is located on a lower floor and has four bedrooms. It's available for 2.8. At 2,200 square feet, the place comes out to be $1,300 per square foot. Giuliani's price is higher up and has a slightly bigger floor plan with 10 rooms, roughly 2,500 square feet. The last sale in the building was $3.7 million for a very similar yet more updated and glamorous apartment, says Jenny Lentz. As such, while the 6.5 is definitely rich, perhaps they are counting on the celebrity attachment. Yeah, I think he's putting this up specifically so he can get like a donor who doesn't even, who, who 6.5 million is nothing for him to just basically do a cash infusion. I don't think it's because he's a celebrity. I think it's like a Trump loyalist billionaire who just goes, yeah, f it here, here you go. Shut the f up. Rudy Giuliani won the deal for OxyContin maker to continue sales of drug behind opiate deaths. Wait, what the f Purdue Pharma hired Rudolph Giuliani, the former New York mayor and now Donald Trump's lawyer, to head off of a federal investigation in the mid 2000s in the company's marketing and powerful prescription painkiller at the center of an epidemic that is estimated to claim 300,000 lives. While Giuliani was not able to prevent the criminal conviction over Purdue's fraudulent cancer, OxyContin safety and effectiveness, he was able to reach a deal to avoid a bar on Purdue doing business with the federal government, which would have killed a large part of the multi-billion dollar market for the drug. Oh, this might literally be one of the most evil things he's done in a, in a sea of evil. At this point, he's just like competitively evil just for the fun of it. You know what I mean? This ghoul deserves everything that he's getting. Yeah, it's what I think of every time I think of all of his bad shit. He deserves every fucking bad thing that's happening to him currently for... Aligning with a with an obvious idiot like Donald Trump. Think of what we saw at a Georgia overall, the district attorney there saying that she wants to have a, a March trial date. She's actually actually asking for March fourth of a trial date. I mean, whether or not that actually happens remains to be seen. But does that seem realistic, just given the makeup of this case, how complex it is, the fact that there are nineteen co defendants here? I think what's going to slow down the Georgia case is the others will file a kind of motion that Mark Meadows has filed to remove the case to federal court. While the state proceedings will continue, uh, it will bog things down a bit. And I, I don't really believe from my talk with lawyers who've really studied this body of law about removal that, that they are going to remove the case to federal court. 
And if they do, it's still the same Georgia prosecutors. Uh, and uh, the calendar could be even clearer in, at the federal level. I don't know. It's just a different jury pool, uh, broader, wider. So that was that's what's likely to slow it down, Caitlin, is the, the removal of proceedings. So you don't think that, that they're likely going to be able to get it moved from a state proceeding to, as Mark Meadows is doing, but also we, we are told by sources that Trump is also likely to do. You don't think that's likely? I, I don't. Uh, it, it just, it's hard to envision this as official uh, behavior of any of the people. When you read that indictment and you read what, what is being included, uh, Mark Meadows was not just setting up media. I'd be so sad. Trump is trying to do this as well, by the way. Trump is also trying to make the move to, to take the, uh, the court case, the federal, away from uh, Georgia State, which is, it's, it's sad. And it's scary. I don't think it'll happen. And yet, I don't like that he's even trying. Uh, he was not arranging telephone calls. That's done by secretaries, staffers, White House operators. Uh, he's in the thick of this. And as the indictment brings out, it's much different than his motion. So I, th I don't think they're going to prevail. And uh, many of them don't even have federal standing to, to, to <laughs> remove. Why not just take the spectacles off? Those are uh, reading glasses, 100%. I don't know if you have any old relatives that need glasses. Usually glasses for old people have like two different versions where like in the bottom of your, uh, in the bottom of your grandpa's glasses, they usually have like a reading portion. And it is specifically when you look down when you're reading, do you uh, activate them? Bifocals, yeah. Ooh, those who are the fake electors, for example, and uh, it's, just, it's just limited to those who were in federal office when these events happened. Guys, you have to understand, the guy that they're talking to right now is fucking ancient. He was born in 1938, uh, okay? Here, here he is. He, he was involved in Watergate. He was a part of the cover-up in Watergate and also gave testimony to Congress as a witness. His guilty plea to a single felony in exchange for becoming a key witness for the prosecution ultimately resulted in a reduced sentence. Which is really funny. It's funny to have that guy come on to talk about Donald Trump's criminal misconduct. Yeah, I mean, and to bring this full circle, Rudy Giuliani is asked, also saying he's going to potentially make that argument, though, I mean, he obviously did not work for the federal government. We'll see what the courts decide. John Dean, thank you for your perspective tonight. Yeah, I mean, he has, like, firsthand experience with